Did they sign Tom Brady and nobody told me? Did they? What happened? By the way, that ball was caught. Just, yeah. just pointing <laughs> it out right. there. Welcome to episode 20 of Ref the District, your DC sports cast. I'm Nathan Perry. With me, as always, it's Matt Rule from the Carolina Panthers. No, it's Chris Stone. It's the Stoner here with me, as usual. Stoner, how are you doing, man? You have a good week? Yeah, good week. Uh, speaking of Matt Rule, so you talked about earlier this week about how, uh, you know, I'm the doppelganger, right? So. I was checking them out. I'm thinking maybe I should do some press conferences as Matt Rule, right? So I start looking at a bunch of his press conferences. There's nothing there. He's <laughs> he's very vanilla. So I could be I was doing about him to, right now. I was, that's right in your acting wheelhouse. Then you don't even you don't have to do anything. You just have to talk, and it's perfect. I just have to be Matt Rule. Hopefully he does something a little wacky, and then I'll go and I'll buy some. Uh, I'll buy like a background, a Carolina Panthers background. <laughs> And, and one of those uh, jerseys or shirts, you know, that they wear, and then and then I'll do a press conference. But he's pretty vanilla. We can save there's, you some money. We can lot. save you some money, and we'll just do a virtual background, so that way you don't have to that, that way you don't have to get that Carolina that too much Carolina blue in, into your into your life. You don't need that. Uh, you don't need that. Well, then I can just afterwards when we're, when we're done with the press conference, I can just burn it, <laughs> right? Because we don't like Carolina. That, we'll, that, we'll just have a burning party. That might actually get you more view, more 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 <laughs> more views than the uh, uh, than the press, the fake press conference. But does Washington play Carolina this year? I forget. I think they do, right? Uh, Maybe. No, man. It's I can't been a remember. while. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna pull up the. Uh, well, the schedule. schedule. Should we go through all the wins and losses again? Yeah. Let's <laughs> for the schedule. I think I think our our uh, our fan base is is a little tired of that as well. But they do <laughs> yeah. play Carolina November twenty uh, first. That so should be a beat down. That's a W. So week we eleven. So yeah, against Sam Darnold. He his name might come back oh, yeah. up again later this episode. So we'll <laughs> we'll see. We got great things coming for you. We're gonna go through uh, the basketball here in the warm up. For the game, it's the good, the bad, the ugly, our GBU segment. This one's going to be focused on the mini camp. I put it in the comment section. If you're listening, go ahead and let us know what your good, bad, and ugly are for the mini camp. Uh, you can type it right in there. As always, we stream these Sunday, 10 a.m. on our YouTube channel, Ref the District. But you might also be catching us on one of your podcast platforms because you can catch us on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or Google. We're there for you. Just make sure that you like and subscribe wherever it is you're watching. Comment, let us know. Uh, it makes us feel better. I'm not going to beg you for it. Uh, right. You know, I did mention last week, though, if we get to 100 subscriptions on our YouTube channel, we'll do a fan mm -hmm. episode uh, and you can be a part of that. So I'm, I'm already prepping mine, my fan fan <laughs> episode. So what do we got to do to get 100 subscribers? What, what is it? Do we have to bribe with more than just... You can have your your video on our show. What do we got to do? We we're at fifty eight, I think. We need to get to we need to get to a thousand, Nathan. We, if we could get to a thousand, that'd be great. I think if we get to a thousand, I would do I would do like a jersey giveaway. If we get to a thousand, a jersey uh, giveaway. Yeah, I would give a you know whichever. It to be fair, it doesn't even have to be. I'd prefer it to be a Washington jersey, you know, of some sort, one of our yeah. one of our teams. But if you happen to be a subscriber from another team. And you make me buy you uh, a jersey. Yeah. Well, we'll see. You know what you can't do? Give, give him that Kerrigan jersey, like I've been trying to <laughs> get you to get rid of. He's he's on the enemy team now. Uh, you can give that away. I tell you what. So we're, as we progress through and as we get closer to the season, you'll pr that one will probably get removed. That one's that's going to come down. Especially, I right. cannot have it up. You know, towards the end of the Not season Eagles when they when the two teams finally meet. I can't. Right. I can't have that. Can't do that. Can't do that. So no, you got to get rid of that. And uh, and what was the one in the middle? Oh yeah, that's, that's your uh, that's, flag football. That's my flag that's football jersey. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's from my. That's a good in case you forget. In case you forget who who here is you know speaking in front of the the microphone. Right. Even even though I block the name mostly, maybe that's a good re that's a good thing too. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, I got a surprise for you later on in the show too. It's a, it's a, it's an announcement. Okay. Right. 
But it's a show announcement, but I haven't shared it with you. All right. So He, he loves doing to... this to me, by the way. Oh, he, yeah. he loves oh, just be like, hey, I, I've got this thing, but I, yeah, I'm i not going to tell you about it. And he, tra- right. he tries to get me live on air. That's uh, right. With, with it's, it. not, it's not one of those. It's not, not going to surprise you. Okay. Or you're not going to be like, what? No, no, no. <laughs> you're going to be... This is going to be your reaction. You're going to you're going to go. Oh. That's it. That's going to be your <laughs> okay. reaction. You're going to be like, okay. For, gotcha. for our yeah. podcast listeners who didn't just witness oh, his uh, his reaction, it was very nonplussed. Uh, yes. uh, imagine Matt Roll press conference. You know, press conference. <laughs> That's right. But it is a big deal for the show. The announcement is. There's a little tease for you, okay. but that's a little bit later. Little All right. bit later. You're going to have to remind me because last time I started signing off and you're like, whoa, 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 I got the, oh, yeah. I got an announcement. So this is the problem when you don't, when you don't let me prep for it, I can't put <laughs> it in true. myself. That's true. So. But it'll be right before uh, GBU, just the, the game part. Okay. Of our so once we show. get to the game, we got a, yep. we got a big announcement from the big stoner. Big show announcement. Okay. I want to, I want to prep myself and our fans, our listeners here. Right. So last time we went into a section where we were expecting big things from you. There was yeah. a bit of a letdown. You had yeah. you had Eric from Declassified and yeah. myself expecting a yeah. giant rant, yeah. and we got very subdued stoner. You, you got to catch me. The rants have to come when the fire is hot, when it just happens. But if you give me a week to to kind of cool down and and let my let my head cool down just a little when bit, you're in the right then you're not gonna, when you're in the yeah, right yeah. headspace. When that okay. happens, when that happens, you're not gonna get the fiery go off on people rant. I'm not like that, as we've probably have if you've probably have heard, if you're if you if you've been you know watching the previous 19 episodes, I can calm down and then as soon as we bring up a topic again, I just get worked up. I just like yeah. which we will hear in a moment. First, we're gonna talk about good things. Okay. Like the Mystics winning back to back games. Yeah. They're still under five hundred, but at four and five, I definitely think that they're you know, with these back to back games, you're starting to see them play better. And the Mystics, I think, are gonna start having that season that, you know, we as a Washington fan base want to see. So good yeah. good for the Mystics bouncing back. Um and Yeah, I told you last week, right, when they were two and five and you said, Should we be worried about it? Eh, no, I'm not worried about them. They're they're too talented, just a rough start. Long season. Don't worry about the Mystics. They'll be there. I don't know if they're a playoff team or a championship contender, but they'll be they'll be right there. Good. Good to hear. Who's not a championship contender is our other basketball team, mm-hmm. the Washington mm-hmm. Wizards, who mm-hmm. especially don't want to be a contender with the rumor that was passed around. You had you had Wizards Twitter blowing up about this. You were actually, yeah. surprisingly enough, you were one of the most level headed people out there who were like, wait. Are we going to trust this person? It's one person, his source. Yeah. We don't know. To be fair, the person is trustworthy. We just don't sure. know that the the source, and it was only coming from one person. It wasn't coming from anybody else. And then the right. wizards came out and spat it. So in, in well, case you're not aware of what we're talking about, there was a there was a rumor floated that the wizards were, you know, eyeing for Brooks, Scotty Brooks, to stay with the team. Right, and everybody lost their dang on mind, myself right. included. I, I I posted a gif on on my Twitter with the from uh, Dumb and Dumber, fingers in the ears. Like I was just, I'm willfully uh, ignoring everything that's going on about this because I was just like, it can't be. You can't you can't do that if you want if you can't run the team back, don't run the coach back. That's right. Right. That's a, that's a perfectly good take. Just 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 move on. But you were pretty level headed. Well. I know you're kind of dancing around. You don't want to call people out. I don't have any problem calling people out, (laughs) right? I'm going to call them out. And it's not a personal attack, but Quentin Mayo is the one who put out a report that said that the Wizards are going to, or he has a source that says the Wizards are mauling, bringing back Scott Brooks as long as Scott brings in all new assistants, right? That was that was what he said. That was his report. Okay, nothing against Quentin Mayo, nothing against his sources, but he's the only person on the planet reporting this. If you look at all the beat writers, the the guys and gals that are there every day with this team and have the best sources, none of them could confirm it. None of them denied it. None of them even acknowledged the report. So uh, we have to be a little bit leery of that report coming out. And I'm sorry, Quentin Mayo is not an insider. 
He's he's a little bit of an insider. He does a show. I don't know if he still does it called Wizards Outsiders. So there, so you know he's not an insider. But I'm kind of playing on words there. But usually, especially in the Washington Football Team Twitterverse, if one of the guys or gals puts out a report about some rumor, the other ones will immediately will they'll, say, they'll start calling and figuring it out and being like, yeah, they'll, and they'll say, yes, I've heard the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's true, but I've heard the same thing. Or they'll say, I've spoken to all my sources and nobody can confirm it or, or deny it. Nobody has heard this, whatever. At least they'll acknowledge it and respond to it. Nobody touched it. And I mean nobody, except for uh, one of my favorite blogs in the entire Twitterverse, which is uh, Bullets Forever, right? They're, they're an excellent blog, and they have great inside sources. They did a poll based on this report. <laughs> if this is true, do you see the Wizards going in the right direction? Well, you can't do that. You can't ha- ask for somebody to uh, say whether or not they're going in the right direction. Based on one guy's report. Well, they can, and they did, and it was because well, it was if it's true. I don't do the Twitter polls normally. I, I stay away from them. I just don't. I don't want to put my my opinion down in somebody's poll. Uh, it's yeah. a weird thing. I'm a weird guy. It is what it is. You know they don't track that. I don't. You can't. See I don't. Who, I don't. I don't care. I answer. like I said. It's I. It's just a personal First, thing. It's a weird oh. thing. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. I did this. To, I did, however, press the no button. Like I hammered it. Like quickly, like how in the world would they be going in the right direction if they decide to keep Scott Brooks? And yeah. it just whether or not the the, the rumor is true or whatnot. It sounds like it's not. Sound you know the Wizards came out and said that's not a decision that's been made. Uh, that doesn't necessarily say, say that it, that that's not the direction they want to go. Right. Um, but it it it's just a weird weird thing for them to do because there's a lot of things that the team the team needs. But first and foremost, it needs a coach that can guide it further. And that was the thing. There was a lot of excitement, you know, at the end of the season, you know, even though the team lost in the in the first round there against the 76ers, you have Beal, you have Westbrook, you, you know, you might have, you, you, you're, you're talking about not retaining the same team so you can do better. And so a lot of fans are thinking, hey, let's get the right coach. Let's start going out there. You you think that they should trade for a couple big pieces, right? That's what oh, that's where course. you're. Where, where, what are some of these pieces that you want that well, hopefully a coach not named Scott Brooks can push into the next level? Well, let's just start with the good old hashtag. Just a fan. I have no clue who would be good for this team and who wouldn't. I have my little my little fantasy lineup that I'd love to see them bring guys in. I'd love to see them bring in a guy like DeMar DeRozan or maybe some younger guys that are free agents like a Gary Trent Jr. who's a great shooter, and that's what they need, shooters. Duncan Robinson's available. He's a great shooter. I have no idea if they can fit these in the cap. I have no clue. But all I know is, like you said, they need to not – they're not going to run it back they need a fresh start, and that includes the coach. I was going to boycott this topic. I was going to do like a little kid and pout and say, I'm not talking about this because <laughs> absolutely nothing has changed since last week except for one guy putting out an unconfirmed report and people going crazy over people it. People got really excited about this one. They they got they, – they, yeah. people were bringing out their pitchforks pretty quickly. In fact, there was a couple of people who – Floated out the idea. And I, and I had this idea pop in my head and I quickly squashed it because, uh, well, for reasons I'll explain later. But people floated out the idea that maybe the Wizards leaked this to get the idea mm-hmm. to see whether or not the fans would support something like this. And the reason why I squashed that, like I thought about it. I almost tweeted it even. And I was just like, wait a minute. The fan base has been very, very clear mm-hmm. from the get-go that they don't want Scott Brooks back. Like right. the presser, and that was even a very abundantly clear at the the postseason press conferences where the questions were being asked about Scott Brooks, you know, being retained. And you saw the Wizards Twitter fan base just absolutely say, no, this is not the route that we want to go. So they wouldn't have floated it out. But then again, an organization that, 
is contemplating keeping Scott Brooks might actually do something like that because that is that is, both of those would be bonehead decisions for the franchise. So right, we'll, we'll see. but we have no idea what's going on behind the scenes, right? We have no idea. People want to say things like, "Well, if they haven't hired anybody by now, then that means they're probably bringing him back." Maybe, maybe not. We have no idea what those discussions are like. We have no idea if he's been if Scotty Brooks said. Or if Tommy Shepard and Ted Leonza said the only way Scott Brooks is coming back is if you change out all your assistants, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's the rumor. We have no. I think clue it's so that way it makes on. it easier to fire him in the middle of the season, right? Oh, that's he, what that would do. It just makes it easier have, to be like, okay, we're just gonna we're gonna can you now. I yeah. I just think what what we'll, 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 I would like to see first and foremost from the Wizards right now would be to let them start a coaching search, right? Let's right, let's start right. hearing them about like, hey, they're interviewing uh, Becky Hammonds is a name that that gets tossed around a lot, right? You have mm-hmm. your your person who you want to you want them to go for, uh, Wes Unsell Jr. Okay, so we got we, you know let's let's hear them setting up these interviews, and but maybe they are Nathan. Maybe they're doing. All I this. think they're just not making it public. I think that you would hear about it. I don't think the Wizards is tight lip. Like we've seen that with the Washington football team where rumors are getting, you know, t- the the things are getting tighter and tighter. The Wizards aren't at that point, I don't think. Mm-hmm. So I okay. think that you would you would see that and I think that honestly the Wizards organization would want that to be public, right? They want the fact that they're they're that they're searching for coaching, you know, a coach to be, you know, public information. Maybe, but if they did that and then they end up deciding to bring Scott back, then that will just create much more backlash, right? Well, if they I'm hoping that, that when, if they decide to go for these... for a coach search, I'm hoping that means that they're not bringing Scott Brooks back, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, so I, I don't know. I think it's... that that's the next step, and I think until then, you're gonna have the, you're gonna have rumors like this pop up with where where people are gonna think, okay, well they haven't started the coaching search. So are they going to retain Brooks? And you do have Westbrook who says that he would like Brooks back. And so right. that that all this is fueling this kind of anxiety for the fan base where it's just like, yeah. wait, you know, are we actually just gonna run Scott Brooks back and hope that new pieces are are what we need? He's had enough time here. I want to talk about yes. those pieces though, because we've talked enough right. about we know we're not Scott Brooks fans. That's you know, Correct. we we would we know we have Coaches that we would like to see. I want to talk about the pieces that need to be sur- that need to surround okay. Beal and Westbrook. Okay. Okay. One, I think that they do want to try to build around them. There's some rumors going around right now, as there are are always are. I think it was, uh, um, man, was it SB Nation? It was some some uh, Bleacher Report maybe is who who decided to push out that Beal would be a great you know, trade target for the Miami Heat. I don't see that. It's like the third year in a row they've done this. I'm pretty sure it's because they can copy paste the previous argument and put it there and then they get paid money. So it is what it is. The Beal and Westbrook duo are very dynamic. I think that 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 can work. But what they really need is, you mentioned it, shooters. They need shooters. Bertans is not going to cut it, right? You need you need more than just Bertans. Yes, more. Bertans by himself will not cut. It. You need more than Bertans. You need you need people. Whether or not that's Rui working on it, you got Avdia working on it. You need people who can who can shoot the three more mm-hmm. consistently mm-hmm. and be outside shots. You need you need a lob presence, right? I think you have that now with Gafford. Um, you need more, he, you know, he needs to get to a point where he can play more than 20 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. And well, there's... go ahead. Sorry. And, and so the reason for this is because Beal and Westbrook love to drive to the basket. Westbrook will lo- Westbrook's a, a strong physical force. He l- loves to put his back to the basket and back down some of these smaller point guards. So if you have too many people crowding and this is what their, their problem right now is they have just a bunch of people who play around the, the basket. It's mm-hmm. just not going to work. All Philadelphia did was 
brought their defense back into – they double-teamed Beal, but then the rest of the guys just backed into the lane and dared the Wizards to shoot. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't they couldn't do it well enough to beat Philadelphia. Uh, I specifically look at game four, game five, which was the game without Embiid. If you got Embiid, they got no shot to, to beat Philadelphia. But in that, that last game, that's all they did. They just compressed their defense in, double-teamed Beal, and said, okay, Westbrook, okay – Howl Neto, okay, uh, Hachimura, you guys shoot. Let's see the sky hook. Let's see what happens. Lopez. Yeah, and that's not good enough, right? So, yeah, they definitely got to get shooters around them. And all this talk about Beal getting traded or Beal leaving, which, by the way, he only has one year left on his con- – he's got two years, but the second year is a player option, yeah. so it's up to him. And Westbrook's got three total years, right? So, conceivably, they are here to stay for the next couple of years. Beal has never once in his entire time through all the losing, he's never once made any indication that he wants to leave. He's always said, when times were at the very worst, I want to be a wizard forever. So let's just take him at his word, because we have no other reason not to, and assume he's going to be here for the next five years, at least. right? And you've got Westbrook for three Let's keep those two together and build around them and not talk about trading Beal and trading Westbrook and blowing off, blowing it all up and starting over. I don't think that's that's the right way to do it. Three-point shooting is a key. If you look at the last eight teams that are in uh, the playoffs right now, I believe I may be mixing up some numbers here, but it's something to the effect of all eight teams are in the top 12 at least in three-point shooting that's where the nba has gone so that's how you got that's how you've got to build your team to be good you need three-point shooters and they don't have any right now yeah enough yeah enough yeah again bertan's not cutting it in that realm we'll see how they what we'll see what what happens maybe next week we'll have a better report We'll, we'll we'll talk about how they did start their uh you know their coaching search and all this good stuff. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Let us at least something. Something. Let us know yeah. who you would like to coach the Washington Wizards and who you might be eyeing. You can get with us at Ref the District on Twitter. Again, streaming on Sundays, 10 a.m. on our YouTube channel. When we come back, we're going to take a brief, brief seven-second break here or so. When we come seven, back, it's going to be the GBU. It's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly on the Washington football team's mini camp right after this. I'm sorry, Stoner. I forgot. I forgot that we're not going into GBU right away. You've got a you've got an announcement for us. Yes, here's the announcement, and it has, and it relates to GBU. Okay. Okay. So, the good, the bad, and the ugly is now sponsored. Woo! We have a sponsor. Uh, see, it was kind of not a not a really you didn't you didn't not expect it to use a double negative, right? <laughs> you kind of expected at some point this was going to happen, but you just didn't realize it was today. I and and. Once you told me that it was it had to happen before GBU, I figured, yeah. okay, this might be the it. sponsor information. Yeah. We'll see. So, yeah. So our very first sponsor in the history of Ref the District, and so I'm going to read it verbatim and then you know expand on it a little bit. But the good, the bad, and the ugly. Got the old man glasses. Where's my music? Yeah, we, need, we need that. We need the old man Still music. music. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> we say that every week. All right. So the good, bad, and the ugly is brought to you by Rick and Libby's. Okay, Rick and Libby's is a family-style restaurant located in the Warwick Warwick Village Shopping Center in historic Newport News, Virginia. And if you're not familiar with Newport News, it is a Washington football team hotbed. It's kind of halfway between uh, Carolina and Washington, D.C., So, but it's Carolina hasn't been around as long, so the roots are there in uh, for Washington football team in Newport News, Hampton Roads, that entire area, Virginia Beach, Hampton, all that. So stop by and check out and support your locally owned business. 
I've been there many times to Rick and Libby's, and it's an awesome spot with fantastic food. And if you do go by there, make sure to let Rick and Libby know that you heard it here on the show. And uh, let's see, and check them out on the web at rickandlibby's.com. We'll, so that yeah, is our we'll get sponsor. Them, we'll get them linked uh, now that I'm aware of it. We'll, we'll make sure that their <laughs> right. their webpage is Thank linked uh, here on our, our show notes and everything. Yep. So uh, thank you, Rick and Libby. I have not personally been there. Uh, I haven't. I, it's been a long time since I've been into the uh, Newport News region. Uh, back when my uh, brother used to live uh, there, you know, big military presence. Uh, thanks to, yep. to you know. I think it's Joint Base Langley now. I think they've got Eustis, Langley, Eustis, all of them are all together. That's correct. Uh, So, you know. And then you've got the Navy base down in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it's actually Virginia Beach. But anyway, right in that area. (laughs) Yeah. Big, 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 big military presence. uh, So uh, we appreciate them. And uh, we appreciate Rick and Libby's for sponsoring gbu the good the bad the ugly so that's that's like the great so now we got it's the ggbu that's right got the great news out first let's get to the good of the midi camp okay so i'm gonna let you go first all right i'm actually gonna let one of our 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 live commenters go first uh, okay and that is uh that chase young looked amazing now i'm gonna assume this that this uh this means that you know he impressed and then he didn't just have good looks because i know my wife personally you know thinks that chase long young looks good like looks looks good um so i can't compete with that uh so i got i I gotta do what i can in other areas uh but uh but but the commenter is right you know chase young you know he missed the voluntary stuff there for the mini camp and he did not miss a beat. He looked great. Uh, you know, he he mentioned he missed the the, the voluntary stuff because, uh, like, he was recording Family Feud. He was doing like a, a magazine shoot, and then he did like this this thing. He was doing workouts on like his big toe. Did you hear about this? Like, did you? Did you no, yeah. I did not hear. Yeah, about he this. was apparently that's a thing. Is he was like doing doing some toe? doing some uh, feet workouts and and stuff to make his 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 you know his big toe stronger. So I, I, I have to agree. The guy the guy again looked impressive. He fit right yeah. in with his teammates. There was no no hardship there. Uh, he was amped, and then he just looked like a person who was going to get double digit sacks uh, oh, easily better. easily this year. Well, is that your good also? I, I'm going to leave this to the fan that, good. Then we'll go to you, okay. and then we'll come okay. back to me. Well, okay. So according to to my timeline on Twitter, the good is everything. The bad <laughs> is nothing. And the ugly, we're not even going to talk about it. But that's right. I think I tweeted out that according to my timeline, every single team is going 17-0, and 0, and there's going to be about 1,500 all pros this year because everybody hey. – Looks good in camp. There'll be fifty-three Washington football team members yeah. listed listed on either on All Pro or Pro Bowl yeah. status, and the team is going seventeen and zero. Right. And and to be fair, as a as a fan of the team, they are seventeen and zero until you tell me otherwise. So until until they get that first yeah. loss, they're going seventeen and zero. That's that's so fair. realistically right. Realistically, and, and and here for the podcast, we don't we you know I gave out the, lo- the losses. I originally had them at nine wins said that maybe we can get you know the team can get to 10 wins but hey as a fan this is the time to dream the season is ahead of us there's a lot of hope and to be fair there's a lot of good coming out this defense looks mightily impressive not just chase young but you have a lot of the younger guys making some good plays you have you know the new the 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 not just the the rookies but the the free agents that got brought in are making mm-hmm. plays for the defense. And it's exciting. So, okay, so if that's the case, if the defense is mightily impressive, what does that say about the offense? Right? We're, that that might be listed under the bad. Yeah. The bad means that the offense still probably needs some yeah, work. Yeah, you know? for sure. But to be, to be fair to this offense, 
this is a defense that is looking, you know, was, you know, number two in some stats last year Mm -hmm. and could potentially make the jump to number one this year. So you're talking this is, if nothing else, is probably top 10 defense. You're going to struggle against a top 10 defense. Uh, especially defense that knows this offense inside and out. They this is who they practice against a lot of the time. Yeah, and the defense um, really didn't change a whole lot. You have a couple of additions and rookies and a free agent, but it's essentially the same personnel. The the important parts where the offense has a lot of new parts to it: new O line, new receiver. Uh, and of course, the big one being the quarterback situation. So, and I heard somebody say that in minicamp, this is where a veteran like Fitzpatrick, who by all accounts was outplayed in camp by Taylor Heineke, but this is, was his opportunity since he's a veteran and he knows how much money he's making and he knows he's pretty much going to be the starter. It, he knows that that he can try some things that he wouldn't normally try in say like a regular training camp so that he can see how certain guys react to back shoulder throws or tight windows or any anything like that so maybe he's doing some of those things that a veteran quarterback can do whereas taylor heineke is just going to be by the book do whatever it takes to impress the coaches so you can get your shot yeah, so he can keep a roster yeah. spot the there's also a little bit of this Fitzpatrick is new to the team mm-hmm. Okay, and so he's having to get, you know, some familiarity with the offense. Taylor Heineke was with Washington last season, has some, you know, Scott Turner specifically, you know, picked him out of the the grocery store. Not really a grocery store. It was uh, he was in college taking classes that I would bomb out in. Uh, Very smart, smart individual, Taylor Heineke. And uh, so he took him out of those classes specifically because he knew that Mm -hmm. offense and he knew that Taylor Heineke can perform in that offense. And Taylor Heineke, you know, did perform well in the offense and has some familiarity with the receivers, Mm -hmm. especially the receivers that he's been playing Mm -hmm. with. Right. So you hear him, you hear about Heineke throwing passes to Isaiah Wright, to Cam Mm -hmm. Sims, to, uh, you know, AGG, Uh, Gandy Golden got out there and had a very impressive catch, which he needed because he was actually on the bad list for quite a bit of the <laughs> yeah. camp. You know, he wasn't impressing. He wasn't getting separation. He wasn't doing this. You know, he was getting beat a lot. And then all of a sudden he gets one big grab and people are like, okay. And there are some people to include our friend L E out on declassified podcast, the WFT declassified podcast who say that Gandy Golden's a lock. Yeah. He thinks, you know, and it's very possible. They did just spend a fourth round, you know, pick on him last te- season. There are people with the team, you know, that, don't have as much clout, don't have as much, you know, hopefully the coaches see that promise. So we'll see wh- wh- what it goes for Anthony uh, Gandy Golden. There. So, let, so, uh, let's, but, so let's explore that just a little bit, the receivers, right? I thought the receivers looked sure. good from, from, from what I had seen. That, I, I have them on my good list okay. as far as for GBU. Yeah, but let, let's, res- let's explore the, the roster spots for the receivers. We're not going to go through all the roster, but just the receivers, because I think it's an interesting yeah. battle. But always remember, the guys who are the fifth, sixth, and seventh receivers are never going to play, right? Unl- unless you need them to do special teams. Unless ne- never is a strong word. Never no, is a I think strong mostly word. Mostly, it's never. Right? They're, they they don't even make the fifty-three or whatever it is on game day. It was at forty-five on game day. Whatever whatever it is, it changed during COVID, so I can't keep up what it's going to be this year. Oh. I remember saying a lot of our fourth and f- our fifth and sixth receivers last well, season. Probably, so. probably because of injury, but not because no, because it was it was because the wide receivers were awful and they had to shuffle them. We were playing people like Inman, and yeah. it was just yeah, yeah, it was bad. So I think the only wide receiver who really didn't like Bidet, right? But he was a, a Bidet rather. Yeah. You know, Bidet might be more appropriate, but Bidet was probably the only one. I think he might have seen a handful of snaps. Right. But for that, for, for you know, a lot of our, our receivers did receive that on the offense. But that's because, again, that's because of injury or ineffective play. But it wasn't that you don't you don't have seven. Let's say you have seven receivers on your 53. You don't have seven of them dressing on game day. You probably no. have five. At the most, five seems reasonable. Yeah. So, so those guys who just barely make the team 
are almost never going to play, again, unless it's injury. So it's good to have the depth, but let's not talk about them like they are an important part of this team because they're just barely hanging on to a roster spot. We know McLaurin, Samuel, and uh, and uh, the rookie, Deami Brown. Deami Brown, Locks. who looked... Who looked, looked great? He looked great. a little rust, not rusty, but he looked a little sketchy early on. A lot you heard a lot about his drops, and and that was something that he had an issue with in college was drops. You know, he was great at the long ball. Fifty, you know, you toss it up there, and he was great it. at getting the yeah. long ball. But some of the shorter stuff he had issues with, and oh, and that kind of started happening. So that's something he's he's working on. But he's a lot. He's a hundred percent locked. Oh, and he, yeah, he he looked way faster, you know, than I think they were thinking he might have actually. Yeah, looked. and he was what so. a th- third rounder? Was he our third? He's yeah. a third he's rounder. Yes, yeah, him him and Saint Juiced, both third rounders who were making a lot of noise. At he camp, could he so. could walk into training camp this summer and lollygag around the field the entire summer. He's making the team. All right. So I, I don't know that okay, that's the case. I think Ron. I think Ron little. Rivera might might. Might stop down on it. Yeah. yeah, that's an that's an exaggeration. You can't <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so those three are locks. I think Cam Sims is a lock because he, of what he can do. He's the glue. They called him yeah. the glue of the wide receiver. Yeah, court. and plus he plays special teams, and that's an important. And he's yes. not just plays them. He's very good special teamer. So I think he's a lock. I think Humphreys is a lock. I know a lot of people don't think nobody really hurt. He's a lock. Okay, so <laughs> that's five, right? So now you've yeah. got all these guys, and at best they're keeping seven. Usually it's either six or seven. It depends on all the other positions and guys that they need to keep based on injury and all this other stuff. But let's just say they keep seven. So now you got two spots left, and you've got Harmon and Gandy Golden and Steven Sims, who, by the way, good reports coming out about Steven Sims. Um, then you've got, uh, you've got DeAndre Carter. Who I'm hearing from a lot of people. Are those good reports? I'm sorry, I got I got to back it up. So our, our 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 viewers on YouTube can see the confusion in my face, but I need the I need the podcast listeners mm-hmm. to know the the confusion as well here. Where did you hear right. good reports I'm... on Stephen Sims Jr.? Was it from his agent? Because we know that he is on that first cut list. Okay. There's no saving him unless unless you know they did have him receiving punts. They were you know they had you know pretty much everybody back there to try you know receiving you know receiving the kickoffs, receiving the punts. Mm-hmm. Unless he absolutely knocks this knocks that aspect out of right. the park, he's I don't see him coming. I agree back. totally. I totally agree. But I'm just saying that there were good reports that he that he looks even faster this year, quicker, not faster. He was he's not a speed demon. He's got the he's quick. I, again, I want to. Where are you right, these reports you. that because I have yeah because I haven't seen them founded and this is coming from the guy right. This is Stoner who literally just railed on uh, on some somebody for Wizards. One person right. reporting it. I have not heard okay. multiple reports saying Steve Sims Jr. was good. So I want yeah where I want my receipts. All right. Okay, I receipts. need receipts. You get your receipts, all right. We'll, we'll we'll talk about your receipts later uh-huh. on in the show. Before we sign off, I I said I was going to bring it oh, up yeah, yeah. during Ref the District. It's going to okay. get brought up. Some freezing cold takes all right. there. So from, so uh, from Steven Sims, I, I agree he's he's going to be cut. But I'm just saying that that <laughs> the reports are that he's having a good camp. Okay, the reports. The then you reports. got okay. uh, DeAndre Carter, who was brought in specifically to be a returner. But yeah, I don't, I don't think he right? makes it. So you got him. Then you got Dax Milne, probably a practice squatter. Practice squad. Isaiah Wright, mm-hmm. probably a pack practice squatter or cut. If he's eligible for the practice squad, uh, I think that he goes to the practice he is. squad. I, I had to look it up this morning. It's very convoluted to try and follow. Yeah, it's, he's played in like there's 10 a whole games, equation. But, yeah. but you can do that if you have two years, less than two years of service, and you go over the, the nine game max, whatever. I think he is. Um, and then you have uh, Troy Brown or Tony Brown, which you may not have heard of, but he's a guy that they brought in last year as well who spent most of the time on the practice squad. But he's in camp and he's playing. So you have all these guys for two spots or maybe just one spot. And and again, we'll go back to the I hear, right? So I hear some people saying, Ganey Golden's a lock. Right, because he's a fourth rounder. He's a Ron Ellie Pace. says it. Ellie, yeah. El, Ellie says that he's. And then a lock. you got other people saying Harmon's a lock. Gandy Golden's gone. What? So, 
it's going to be interesting, but that could easily be your six seven. Right, right. right. So let's not get it confused that if let's just say it's both of them, they make it. They'll never play unless there's injuries and you need good depth, but they'll never see the field. If in, in the best case situation, all your starters are healthy, they're all playing well. You'll never see Gandy Golden and Harmon touch the field. So let's not get carried away too much with the end of the roster, guys. In a perfect situation, you, they'll never play. Think things coming out of the camp good. My, you know, my sources. You know, <laughs> right, my right. sources. We all know about say sources. that Har- Harmon has looked good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not not showing a lot of uh, wear and tear from that ACL injury that yeah. he had. You know, more than a, a season ago. So. The, his his biggest knock is that he, you know, he's not a Ron Rivera guy. They didn't pick him. Yeah. Right. So he's from the old regime. So we'll see. We'll see how that that pans that, out. That doesn't matter so, unless you're you're on the you're on the cut line or whatever, right? If you can play yeah. and you didn't play for Ron Rivera before, hey, he doesn't care. You just got to be able to play and play well. So, any other goods that you had for the mini camp that you can think of? Mm, that's probably all the good. I'm Saint Juiced. I guess they were really yeah. praising him on that last day of. Like I said, both bo- both uh, both third round picks were were looking looking pretty good, and uh, I think that's that's promising for Washington if they can get some some good uh, you know play time for them this season. I think that'll be, I'll be I think that'll be good things for for Washington football mm. team. All right, we're ready to move on All to right. the bad. We talked about how the offense probably looked, you know, a little yeah. bad. Uh, I won't bring up our commenters bad because that to me is an ugly. Mm. Uh, we, do you need the old man glasses no, no. for that I, one yeah, too? I remember now. Yep. <laughs> I remember. So, what are some of what are some of the bads that that you heard that you you know came out of minicamp I, with? I I'll I mean I said it earlier. I was kind of joking, but it but it kind of true. You really didn't hear a whole lot of bad coming out of camp. Everything was extremely positive, high energy. Uh, they love Ron's training camps, um, OTAs, whatever they're called. They love it because they're they're quick, they're fast moving, a lot of energy, um, fairly physical without Everything's pads. done with purpose. Yeah, things yeah, done with a purpose. Everything's done that's, with purpose. That's, that's a good way to put it. So I don't know. I, can you nitpick on some bads? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is the right. part where we're supposed to ref. Yeah. This is where we're supposed to come in. And we're, spo- we're we can blow the whistle on some small things. To me, the you know, you said the offense looked bad, and I said that's possibly something that could be bad. But honestly, the receivers I thought looked strong mm-hmm. for the most part, from what I had, from what I had seen and heard. The running backs looked pretty mm-hmm. good. The offensive line looked pretty good. The tight ends. Some looked good, some not so oh looking good. I'll Boy's get to get to one specifically in the ugly, namely not really the the player, but rather something I I had said. And then uh, really, what it comes down to, the reason why we think the offense looked bad was because the QB play mm-hmm. was bad, right? So I don't necessarily, I wasn't, I did not walk away from this with a strong, you know, feeling that the QB play is going to be there for the team, mm. you know, and to be fair, we knew this, right? So we know that it's, it's fits magic and it's fits mm. tragic. You get both in one pack package. It was the same thing with sexy Rexy, you know, years ago with Grossman who, you know, you, you had to take the good and the bad. There's going to be games where he's going to, you know, light it up fits or, or, or Rex Grossman. They just light it up, but then you're going to have these games where they just look like disasters yeah. So I'm not, I, I'm not as confident now as I was. And you, we, we talked about this with Declassified. You got to expect Fitzpatrick isn't changing. You know, he's, this is his 10th team. It's, you know, X amount of seasons. He is who he is. He is, he is who yeah. he is. You're going to get both things. You're going to get some of that heroic, you know, gameplay. And you're going to get some of these things where you're just like, you're screaming at the TV. Thankfully I have those, uh, those uh, champagne cork flags that oh, that my wife yeah, made me, those. so that way I don't break a television. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, so, 
it's there's some good and bad there and unfortunately i just i'm not walking away very confident and i know a lot of people are walking away super confident because you heard a lot of good things from heineke mm-hmm. you know he did throw a few picks in there and everything but you know he wasn't trying to one of the things i think that the coaches said about him which they liked is he's not forcing things you know he he can improvise but there, he was doing a lot of things within the system and if it wasn't there he knew to throw it yeah. away and that's to me that was probably the best thing i heard about the qb play and it's because you know that these guys especially heineke who they list at 6-1 the guy's probably 5-11 uh maybe 6 foot um but he's done a lot of working out mm-hmm. but you got that heineke hype yeah. going and people are really really excited about that but yeah, and to me that's probably the best part to hear about him is you don't want to see him get injured he did a lot of crazy, you know, things during the Tampa Bay game. Very exciting play there. Yeah. But if you want the full season, you need him to make smarter plays throughout the yeah. season. So mostly bad QB play, but at least that was something that was good. Yeah, if you haven't seen Taylor Heineke play before, well, just wait till about week eight, nine. You'll you'll get to see him every week when he replaces <laughs> Fitz Tragic. <laughs> Uh, and I by week is by week is the ninth. Yeah. So well, so you're at the it's bye either week. you think it's going to at least happen after the bar or right week. before the week before. And, I, and again, like I usually do, I'm I'm kind of kidding. I don't want that to happen, but I, I'm in Ellie's corner, right? Ellie's talked about that as you just mentioned. Is that Fitz Fitz Magic Fitz Tragic? I don't even what is his real name? Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. <laughs> right? He he is who he is. Let's not expect him to all of a sudden become an, a great quarterback in year sixteen with his tenth different team. He's the odds are very long against him doing that. So we just have to temper our expectations about what he's going to be able to do with this offense. The team is going to be carried by the defense. And they looked really good. Offense did not. They looked bad. If if you can possibly look yeah, bad, not as not not as good, right? Because right. like you mentioned, a lot yeah, of positive you can't look stuff bad coming out of the in camp. Minicamp. You just can't. All right. Well, there. Well, I disagree because there was a couple different ugly yeah, things there, I got a couple. that happened. Yeah, yeah. You know. So so our our commenter really didn't like Ron's response to Chase Young not being at the voluntary yeah. camp. We. It is, you know, it's Chase Young. He didn't show up. Chase Young gave reasons. He showed, he did his thing. Ron isn't, Ron isn't upset with it. They've probably talked it out. The kid's a baller. It's, we're going to move okay, on. So he, no he one's going to be talking about it later. He doesn't have to practice. Don't even come to practice, Chase. Just don't even bother. <laughs> Just show up on game day. He Everyone was else. there for the mandatory right, practice. Look. That's what he's there for. Again, I'm not trying to kill the guy because. Get off the kid's back, but, man. Get off the kid's but, back. You know what I found interesting? There was that exchange that was put out there that I think they were coming onto the field for a practice. And Jamin, 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 he's walking towards the field. And Chase comes running behind him and yells at him. We run to the practice field around here. And Jamin Davis was like, oh, man, you, you're you're serious, bro. And he's like, you'll never know when that comes into play, is what he told him. And if I was Jamin Davis, I'd have been like, dude, I was running to practice last week <laughs> when you weren't even here, when you were making your TV commercials and making all your endorsement money. I was here. So I'm just so I just, I, what, was that to the practice field? I thought the, the, the way that I heard the story was it was it was uh and this is this was to me Chase's leadership showing up right uh, and, and here it was he was talking to to Jammin to Jamin 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 the Jamin Jamin yeah. Davis to to Davis the young rook about hey when the play's over you got to run you got to run to the 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 uh, sideline uh, outside the, the yeah the sideline okay. that's what it okay. was he and the and it was just, and the reason why and chase chase said it was you never know when it's going to okay. matter and it's and it's true because how many qbs have gotten really good at getting that 12 man on the field call mm-hmm. because they just get the line offensive line there and snap the ball okay so you got to run especially you're a, you're a 20 some odd year old rookie you got you got the legs to go ahead and hit the hit hit the field. I can understand if it's one of our interior linemen who've got a little bit more bulk to them, 
and they're a little bit, you know, something not, not well, we got a really young defensive line, which is great, but you know, maybe one of the older guys who, you know, might struggle a little bit, you know, sprinting to the sideline. Tim line. Settle. But yeah. You know, Tim Settle's <laughs> He's young. A big dude, though. Isn't he? He is a big He is a big he dude. Is he is a big opposing dude. fella. But <laughs> but my point being that that Chase is sitting here yelling at not yelling, talking to I'm, I'm again. I'm over encouraging, encouraging, encouraging to tell him okay. to do something. This is this is a young guy who shows up to the mandatory camp and is teaching the younger generation, you know, how to get there. And he's not just motivating them; he's motivating the whole team. Okay. He's he's walking around. And he's inter- interacting. This again. This is a non-story for me. This is not like Chase Young not being there during the voluntary stuff doesn't matter. Chase Young being there during the mandatory camp and mandatory stuff. And showing out, not just physically, not just with his own play, but also in the leadership aspect and the team aspect, pff, sign me up 100%. No, I, I only, respectfully yeah. disagree on that. Well, go ahead and put on your old man glasses and yell at the cloud, stoner, because... <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody this... to get off my lawn. <laughs> but, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll say this forever. I'll say this forever. But you have to lead when you're a leader, you lead by example. And instead of leading by example and being there with every other teammate, every single other teammate, you were making your Geico commercials or whatever it was. Your your family feud. No, I think it was he was working on his toe yeah, thing. I think it was, it was it was it was I don't it, care. It was a commercial for Rick and Libby's. That's what I think it was. He was doing a Rick and Libby <laughs> spot. Uh, so that, that might be okay. I think they would be ecstatic. They they would they would if if they could get Chase Young to uh, to uh, do a Rick and Libby's commercial, they would not be sponsoring our good, bad, and ugly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I'll I'll try not to um, to think. Do you about have your it own much. uglies? My, do you have your own uglies of the camp? Um, this was this was this is this is one that was injected by one of our our live listeners right yeah. now. And if you have if you have any comments for the GPU, please put those in. I'll I'll, I'll Stoner and I will talk to, talk them out. But right now, I want Stoner's ugly. Okay. I want what was something that was ugly for, ugly from the camp for. Uh, well, from I had you? the ugly there the story about uh, Chase talking to Jamin Davis and where where um, Jam and Jamin should have just said. Look, I was running to the sidelines last week and nobody was yelling at me. Oh, that's right, because you weren't here. I was. That's kind of a goof. Again, this whole thing is a little bit goofy. I don't think it's a big deal, but it could be later on when things start going in the toilet. All right. So, and my other ugly was the situation with uh, Montez Sweat with his his vaccine announcement, where he said in the same paragraph, he said. I don't know enough about the vaccine and what's going on, but I also don't want somebody coming in here and teaching me because they may be teaching me the wrong thing or whatever. You can't say say both of those things. I don't know enough to make a decision, but even though somebody's given me the opportunity to learn about it, I don't want that either. That was certainly my biggest beef with the with the whole thing was he's he wasn't a fan of them bringing in a an expert, but he admits that he wants doesn't know enough and he wants to know yeah. more. Yeah, so that doesn't make sense. I don't I don't really particularly have a beef if he doesn't take the vaccine. So, totally up to okay? him, right? Personal personal choice. It's fine. Even Ron Rivera <laughs> said that afterwards. He was just like, he's a young man. He's got to make his own choices. You know, he was. You know, he's going to talk. You know, Ron was going to talk to him about uh about the vaccine itself great response from coach loved hearing it i was disappointed in montez not not necessarily because of the fact that he's not going to take the shot he's not the only one uh you got swaggy you know chris baker who thinks that it's toxic you know and and i just want people to get educated the best they can and make a decision for them okay and i think montez sweat I don't think that his comment, you know, makes it seem like he wants to be educated. Right. Because if you want to be educated, then you shouldn't hate them bringing in a vaccine expert, you know, a medical professional Mm -hmm. to talk about the vaccine. You should be welcoming that. And if you hear that information, you're like, hey, I'm still going to wait because you're talking to a couple, you know, retired service member and stoner and myself who's still, you know, currently active duty. 
we've we've had quite a few different things here you oh. know the anthrax oh, shots yeah. the They're malaria all, pills all the malaria like pills. there's 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 been so many things that have go- coursing through our body i understand the desire you know a lot of that's vitamin m and motrin you know motrin will just take care of everything right, right. broke your leg um, but take, uh, some motrin. Take, take some motrin you got a headache motrin it's it's fine um you know i understand the desire to want to wait mm-hmm. right this is they have done the clinical studies they've done this you know i i was confident enough in it you know granted again i've had to go through you know a lot of different things as it is but uh i was confident enough i got vaccinated mm-hmm. um so i i personally i made that decision for myself right. he's going to make his decision whichever way he goes that's his decision okay. i just want it to be educated and those comments to me tell me he doesn't necessarily want to be educated because you know there's it, i don't want to get too much on the vaccine right. kick because we're, we're a sports right. podcast yeah we're a sports podcast but there are people out there who who are just like the magnet the that thing have you heard this like it's magnetizing and 5g it's just like they're and that's a medical professional too and <laughs> yep. it's just like uh, people i i just don't understand people sometimes i'm but Hey, listen. Do your you best. Get, vac- get educated. And, if you and, get the vaccine, I mean, they're implanting a five G chip into you at the same time. So, so it's like track. Maybe my cell coverage will be yeah, better. That's right. Uh, I got a yeah. tower right here, baby. So I'll never <laughs> lose signal. Um, but okay, and I and I agree with all of that. However, you there's something that maybe we're not taking into consideration when we talk about Montez can do whatever he wants, and we don't know the full policies yet because I don't even think the policies mm-hmm. have been out have been finalized and agreed upon by the union and all that other stuff. But there are going to be policies for training camp on how much practice time a team can have or how much time together in meeting rooms and weight rooms based on how many people within the organization have gotten the vaccine. Yeah, I think the number being floated around right now is yeah, 80%, 80%, right? I, That's what their number, their tr- the teams are trying to get to yeah. is 80%. So let's just say, hypothetical, worst case. Uh, it's already hit the it's already hit the coaches, right? There's some coaches who weren't allowed to be. Like in uh, meetings or something? In yeah. meetings and stuff. Yeah. Like they they had a deadline to get the, to get the, essentially the first mm-hmm. shot. So what I think is the deadline was for. And if you didn't get that, if you didn't meet that deadline, you were all of a sudden, you're not in like the class one of uh of the situation right. and so now you're being you're being excluded you can't be in these personal things right. like that and that's what the teams are trying to get because they're at the big term is herd immunity mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so for the vaccine you know they are looking for at least i think the number is 80 percent is what i've heard and that's why washington football teams bringing in these experts and trying to you know the, every team is mm-hmm. doing this this isn't just washington this is all the teams because there's a competitive advantage to having your players be able to play the game of football. And that was something that I think a lot of people were, were getting on Montez sweat about was yes, you're young. You haven't got there. And that was the other thing he said. It was just like, you know, he won't, he doesn't need to, to get the vaccine because he doesn't have the the disease. So he'll wait to get treated and it's, Vaccines help prevent you from getting the disease, and that's what the team wants. Because if you get this, you're going to be out. And look at Miles Garrett last season, mm-hmm. who did contract it and was out, you know, for a decent amount of games. And then when he came back, he said he was still struggling right. with it. And so it's just like that's what I'm just be smart, make you know, it's your decision. Do the research yourself. Yeah. You know, come up with your own decision. Don't don't get angry right at somebody else's decision yeah. okay i say this all the time with with my with my work people just focus on what you can control yeah, sure and what you control is you and your body and you know yeah because it it could come it. like i like we were saying it worst case scenario they're at 77.6 percent and they just need one more player to get the vaccine to get over that 80 percent and they can have full participation in everything but he decides not to, and not just him. There's obviously more because there's more than 20% who are not vaccinated, but it's just him and others that don't get the vaccine. And then the other teams have a competitive advantage, like you said. So it could affect the performance on the field of the team if you don't get it. 
How much? Maybe very, very minimal. But it could. And we all know that every team and every player will do just about whatever it takes up to the edge of cheating to be able to get the some, most. Some teams some even pass go that over edge. it. Uh, <laughs> who will do whatever it takes to get any sort of advantage, competitive advantage, to win. So you have to take that into consideration too. Not just you have to take your employer into consideration, not just yourself when it comes to the vaccine. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. First time Washington football team uh, was really trending on Twitter, like national level yeah. Twitter was Montez Sweat's. Uh, not for something uh, good, of course. Not, yeah, it was very controversial situation. And then Sam Darnold doubled down on it. And thankfully, we, we kind of left that battle space. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Sam Darnold said, pretty much said the same thing, which was a little bit more hilarious because the guy does have some uh, some history with uh, communable diseases. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, again, we'll be playing Sam Darnold, the Panthers, November 21st. So maybe. It'll be an, an, maybe Sam Darnold. <laughs> maybe Sam Darnold. <laughs> maybe Sam Darnold. We'll see. So uh, any other uglies that you uh, have? No, that's, that's probably it. I didn't have any. you have any others? Okay. Any other uglies? I have one All ugly. Right. I'm going to bring it up now because it seems to be the best spot to bring okay. it up. You, know, you mentioned. I want to let me bring up this tweet uh -oh. here of of yours, and and this is this is this is where this is where it's it's uh I, I'm a it just is a hilarious thing. To I'm me a notoriously like, oh, um uh what do you call it? spontaneous tweeter? I'll just say I'll just put something that just came to the top of my head, so I can't. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to back this up today. I have no idea what this. You, is. you you can't back you can't back this up because this is this is already freezing cold takes at this point. Okay. Um, let me see if I, I man, why are you so buried here? Probably because I got so many tweets <laughs> that zero, almost zero people see. So it's just for my own. You know, when you got to get something out, you just put it out there. What what did I say? All right, this so. is. Hawks Nuggets yep. at home tonight. Locks of the year. That was pretty, you know, that was pretty bold yep. of you. Locks of oh, the yeah. year. This is this is why currently you're down on dollar dollar. By the way, we just finished our GBU segment. Dollar dollar is not something we've brought up. Yep. I I need to know your 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 future locks mm -hmm. so I can bet against right. them and make some money. We're not really big gamblers here on Ref the District, but uh, but. Stone put out here, Stoner put out here, Hawks Nuggets at home tonight, locks of the years. Both teams yeah. lost and decidingly fashion. That wasn't like yeah, close they games. They were they were, they were they were running running away. So I just need to bring that up in ugly. Okay. Because there was I forgot to bring it up when we were talking basketball. So it seems appropriate yeah. to talk about it right here. Alright, right that's fair. But I do and I I I stand by that that's I agree. Terrible, terrible tweet, right? But listen, I do that for a reason. I put these out, these these off the top of my head, oh, this is definitely going to happen, betting world type things. I put those out there all the time. And I like to do that for my own personal uh, therapy. And that is to remind me <laughs> that I am not a sports gambler. I am a fool when it comes to gambling, and that's why I don't do it. You will never find anywhere. You, here, you know what? I tell you what, though. Let me write down. I'm going to write down. Jeez, do I even have a pen? Yes. I'm going to write down all the years <laughs> that, I, that I've sports gambled, right? I'm going to write down my bottom line of win or lose, okay? Or, or what my money bottom line is of all the money I've either won or lost. Do you? Do you want to? Do you hazard a guess of what it might be? I'm writing it down right now. I'm going through all. Are we my... including the dollar dollar bets? No, this is all my real gambling. Real? I'm gonna guess it's zero. You don't do it, right? That's right. You see a that big goose egg? A big old where's yeah? A big yeah yeah big goose zero. Egg. I don't gamble because I know even the greatest gamblers in the world in the history of the world are winners at like a 52 percent clip. They basically are even depending on how much they. They gamble uh, per per game or whatever. But I don't do it because I'm terrible at it. That's why my gambling is to put a tweet out there that I don't really care if it wins or loses <laughs> because it doesn't cost me any money. You need to start putting on that you're not a financial advisor yeah. or sport. Hashtag just a fan. And folks. you know what? Hashtag Nobody else fan. is a great gambler either. 
I don't know anybody who's a great gambler. If they did, I remember one time uh, I went into Harris in, in New Orleans and I uh, did like the quarter quarter slots. And I went in there. I was like, I'm gonna, I'll have twenty bucks and I'll just spend yeah. some money and you know whatnot. Uh, I it was like my third pull. I hit sevens across the board, and I hit the you know quote unquote jackpot. It wasn't much. It was I walked away with like less than two hundred bucks. Um, but I made it. I, I cashed out. I was done. Yeah. I was just like. Cool. And the people I went with were like, no, you gotta, you gotta keep playing. And I was like, but I, but I won. (laughs) Like, no, no, you just gotta keep putting, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm walking away. I went into a casino with 20 bucks. I'm leaving with more than $20. I'm okay. If I just sit around and have a couple beverages and watch you guys play, (laughs) I don't, I'm again, we're both stoner and I not big gamblers. Uh, We do the dollar dollar thing as a bit of a fun, uh, a fun little, you know, tease and whatnot right now. We do have one more ugly Uh-oh. because we have a dollar dollar bet on Sammy Reyes making the the fifty three man roster, yeah. and he I didn't list him on the bad because it goes here on the ugly because I'm going to be down on that hey, bet is my guess right. now he you know physically he's imposing right. he looks great. But as a player, he's got a long ways to go, and that showed during during the camp. So he's behind a lot of the other tight ends. Yeah. You know, Bates has looked good. You know, the rookie that picked out, uh, out of the fourth round. Obviously, Logan Thomas is uh, is the number one tight end. People's Jones, Ricky Seals you know, Jones. People, people, you can never remember Seals his Jones. Name. That's so, you know, the, the third, the third tight end might see less play than your sixth receiver. We'll yeah. see. Well, he's, he's just going to um, be a straight up blocker, special teams kind of guy. If he, if he even yeah. dresses. So, okay. Sammy Reyes has a long ways to go and I'm going to be down a dollar. The good news is, is from our, 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 uh, Super Bowl dollar dollar. I'm yeah. up. Up $1. So, I'm up okay. $1. So this should just even. So, now. uh, so like I did last week. Well, last week I offered you a buyout at 75 cents. Well, my odds have gone up a little bit, so I'll still offer you a buyout, but now we're at 80 cents. I'll buy you and I'll offer you an 80 cent buyout. I, I'm going to, I'm going to stick right, with okay. it. I'm not going to back down. Right. I made it. I don't like dealing with the fractions when it comes to dollar dollar because eventually we'll have like a graphic and I don't have to put and explain why I'm at point okay. eight. Uh, or point two. I'm just offering um, you, you know, you don't have to spend as much money. I'm just, I'm offering you a buyout no. each week. I'm not doubling. I'll tell you this. I'm not doubling down okay. on it. That's That's right. I won't do no, that. You don't want to. I'm not going to back down, but I'm not double. I'm not going to, I'm not going to double down on, on Sam Reyes making the 53 man roster. He does have a month to work on those skills before they head down to Richmond, Washington football team going to be down in the Richmond area. Uh, if you continue going down a little bit further South, you'll see our first sponsor down in the Newport news region. Go ahead and talk to them about our first sponsor again for the, this is for GBU, our sponsor for the good, the bad, yep. the ugly here on ref. The, the GBU is sponsored by Rick and Libby's family owned restaurant in Newport news, Virginia. If Newport news sounds familiar, a lot of great athletes have come out of there. Allen Iverson, uh, Michael Vick, Ronald Curry, a whole bunch of them come from that area. And uh, so Rick and Libby's is a family owned restaurant right in there. I would highly recommend going there. If you mention our name, I'm sure they will take care of you. Uh, I met Rick. Um, we were both referees, uh, or not referees, uh, umpires in baseball down there. We both got started the same year, and so we got to know each other that way. Great people. Rick and Libby are both great people. Support uh, their locally owned restaurant, Rick and Libby's, or check them out on the web at rickandlibby's.com. Excellent. Thank you, Rick and Libby's. And coming up in our post game, it's the Nationals. The Nationals did not have a great week. I started kind of, I, I was looking at it. And I was just like, I was like, actually, they might have, you know, played 500 ball this week. But then when I actually tallied it up for from the from the sixth through uh, today, 
They've got four losses and two wins. Yeah. They do play the Giants today at 105. Mm-hmm. So there's a chance that they could still not be 500 on uh, in a week's worth of ref the district. But uh, at least then maybe they could have three and four, be three and four. It's looking like the season's not going to go as planned, especially as the top two pitchers, Scherzer and Strasburg, continue to battle injuries. Yeah. You know, Stras, you know, it's uh, Scherzer left the game after 12 pitches. Uh, was, not even that. Like Twelve I pitches. Think he had yeah, seven was, or eight. I mean, it's semantics, yeah. but yeah, low, 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 low pitch yeah. count uh, for Scherzer. What are what are the Nationals going to do going forward? Uh, you know, there, it doesn't sound like they're going to be buying, no. but the, as as far as selling, their biggest ticket was Scherzer, and now he's injured. Yeah. Is this somebody who they're going to be able to get anything for? Or is this somebody who they're going to get stuck with? And, you know, and I hate to say get stuck with. This is this is Max we're talking yeah. about. Uh, it's Scherz Day. We get a very excited as national mm-hmm. fans. So what is, uh, you know, what are they looking at? I don't know. For, first of all, it's over for the for this season. You're officially yeah, calling, them, calling dead. them dead. The I don't see any way that they can come back from what they're doing based on what they've done for the first 60 plus games already. They're almost, they're almost a third away through the season, right? Probably more than a third way. And they're just not good in any area. They, 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 uh, they, like you said, they have the problem with their starting pitching, right? Max is, I don't think the max thing is long-term. Um, Strauss is hurt. He's been out a while, probably be out a while. Corbin's terrible. And then you get into four and five in the bullpen and nothing good ever comes from that, no matter what team you're on. And worst of all, they can't hit. I don't know what happened other than you replaced in the middle of your lineup. You placed Anthony Rendon and Ryan Zimmerman and Howie Kendrick with Josh Bell, Kyle Schwarber, and Starlin Castro, and that's not going to get it done. They're all three of them. Are not well, and some it. of those are some of those are two years removed as well. So I mean, yeah. it's it's uh, Rendon hasn't hasn't uh, well, hasn't hit for the Nationals year, since the World last Series. Last year doesn't yeah, count. So uh, that wasn't I mean, even a season. I mean, it kind of counts. No, it kind of counts. Soto Soto played well last We're, year. You got to you know. It, I'll say this. You know, the Nationals are the reigning full season right. champions still. Of so course. that that part I, I that part okay. I agree with. I, I think that it, it they're in such an awkward spot. Yeah, they are because they're not a young team. Uh, they don't really have great talent that's the, waiting in the weeds. A lot of the 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 people that they had down in the uh, AAA, AA aren't panning out. They've traded away a lot of resources because they went for mm-hmm. it. They did get that championship, mm-hmm. but now it's looking like they might be mired in and not even mediocrity at this point. They're I don't even know that they're, the games are all that enjoyable. No, they're not. You know, when you're when you're losing, it's already not fun. But then, even in the games they win, there's very few far few and far between games where they just are playing exciting baseball, yeah. and that's rough. That is that's that's tough. Just take this weekend. Right. This so far, these three games against San Fran, they lost one to nothing on Friday night. They won two to nothing in the first game. And then they lost two to one in extra innings, where it was zero zero going into the the eighth, which is the extra innings. But don't get Nathan started on seven inning games. I seven so hate. To, I don't. I don't care that the Nationals pulled away with a with a two zero victory. It's a seven inning game. I hate it. Yeah. I I enjoyed the. I uh, you know, congrats to the Oklahoma Sooner. Uh, softball Mm -hmm. team for winning the national championship i enjoyed watching the softball Mm -hmm. uh games those end in seven but they're supposed to end in seven baseball's supposed to end in nine yeah i end in nine game end in nine like stop with the seven inning i generally agree i generally agree um but so you had zero runs and then you had two runs and then you had one run so you scored three runs in three games and that's boring. And the other teams only scored what are they zero, and then 
Um, well, I, one pitching duels. Zero, They're pitching duels, and and there's a greater there's a greater issue with the the baseball league right now, uh, MLB, in that. You know, they're talking about having to do, you know, pitcher checks to make sure they're not doing foreign substances. Yeah, yeah. So because you're Pitching hey, you're having these pitcher duels, right? You're at, and the game is in a very interesting spot. The baseball, you know, as a whole is a very interesting spot. A lot of people are like, you know, money balls ruined it. People are too focused on the numbers. It's all about exit velocity and launch um, angle launch angle right. and all this other stuff yeah. instead of just getting on you know the thing is is i'm pretty sure moneyball is about getting on base mm -hmm. right they're not about that it's not about the long ball you can't you can't really play to that you want to just get on base yeah. so it's very interesting how teams have taken this and how the game has progressed and a lot of people feel you know like it's it's going in the wrong direction and it is. I've, I've mentioned this. I struggle with this. I'm a Nationals fan. Love the team, but even I struggle with the with the how long the season is. As I don't typically pay that much attention to the day to day games mm -hmm. until after the uh, All Star yeah, sure. break, and then I then I start really kind of tuning in and seeing what's going on and and everything because these seasons are these seasons are just really right. long. And then when you have three and a half hour games, now when you go to the ballpark, mm -hmm. that's, di that's that's a totally story. different. That's totally different. I'd it's go see story. the worst team in Major League Baseball if I can go to the ballpark, right? It's just well, you're a, pretty close to right? the Orioles. Well, yeah, and I, <laughs> I used to go to a couple of Orioles teams a year. That, Camden Yard, yeah. beautiful park. It's just, love, love, it's great. Love going watching to that a baseball game. Is watch any sport live, but baseball is great because you don't have to sit there the whole time and be focused. You can just hang out. You can have a beer, you can walk around, and you won't miss much because there's not much going on, right? Uh, so, yeah, going to the game is totally different than paying attention to the everyday game from home for 100%. But they're just they're boring to watch right now because they can't hit. The national – and the pitching is, is – you know, I, I like – actually, I like good pitching duels, but the Nationals pitchers just aren't – doing it right now you know scherzer before the the injury you know looked okay like he had rough start started having some good seasons starting to get back into the scherzer that we expect strasburg has been missing mm -hmm. just entirely gone at what point do they just decide because this is a lost mm -hmm. season that they just shut strasburg down for good they don't try mm -hmm. i hope they don't do that they shouldn't do that they're paying, they're... this this team has history yeah, with sure. that in, 20, in 2012, in the playoffs, right, with the playoff push and and stuff on yeah. the line, they're like, nope, he's got a pitching. He's we've got a hard number of games he's going to show up to, yep. and they they yep. pulled him. You're right, for, and that was for the better betterment of the franchise. I would have to say, I guess it paid oh, out. Oh, 100 percent paid. You know, set, 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 well, seven years, or seven years later, they finally that that finally panned out. You'll take but, it. But uh, I get you know if you if you tell so, somebody at at that time says if. You shut them down right now. I guarantee you, in seven years, you'll get a World Series championship, and he'll be the MVP of the World Series. You do it every time. Now you can't guarantee 100%. it, but, but looking yeah. back on it, you have to say, okay, that was a, a good decision. Who knows if they're correlated, right? You can't. There's nothing to measure to be able to say the reason he was so good in 19 is because they shut him down. But you can just assume that that they did the right thing and it panned out. 100. percent But so would would they do that again? They might. Would they set? I I think that honestly, I think that's what's going to happen is they're going to keep trying to test them out, and they're going to they're going to realize like, hey, you need longer term. We don't need you this season. How long is this you contract? Know. He just resigned, right? So he he, he resigned after the so the World right. Series. I want to say it was three years. On so top next season, on top of yeah, I think it's so like we five should, or six do, year deal. Does he? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a big bopper, man. There's a lot of money in him, so yeah. We'll see. We, so we know the Nationals, or we we think the Nationals won't be buying. No. What pieces are, are you selling? You know, do you do you you know tr are we going to see Turner or Soto go, oh, or is these the, are these enough. the players you're trying to you're trying to you know obviously these are the the good players mm -hmm. that you have like the phenomenal players. Are they going to be able to sign both? Are they going to be? Are they going to try shipping one right now? Because you got teams that could potentially use an all-star shortstop mm -hmm. or the best hitter in baseball. 
So. No, no, there are two untouchables. There are three to me, but that's you know that's with my big ticker right here. Hashtag just yeah. a fan. Hashtag just a fan. Um, Soto and Turner are untouchable. You're not trading those regardless of how bad the season goes. You're just going to lose them to free Well, you agents. still got a couple years left on both of them. It's not like the end of this year they're a free agent. Um, and then for me, you don't trade Max. And I, I hate when people say he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year, so you go ahead and trade him and get something for him, and then you re-sign him back at the end of the year. Well, that's not a guarantee. So I don't know why you would you – would, who would who would be that crazy to think that that could work? Well, ha- uh, who you? Are you saying, oh. no? Who no? Oh, I'm I not see a lot. Of who? I see a lot of that. Yeah, just go ahead and oh. trade them because then because people bring need their. You know, that rarely need happens. Rethink. Uh, yeah. I think Araldus Chapman is the only one that I can ever think of that that ever happened to when he got traded. I think to the Cubs, won a world from the Yankees to the Cubs, won a World Series with the Cubs, and then re-signed back with the Yankees. That it has also a money thing. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a money sure. thing, and that's where that's where Washington Nationals will fall flat is they won't spend the money to get Scherzer back at the end. If they trade him away, it's he's gone. Yeah, and and I don't want that to happen. But, I want him to stay here as long as possible. But I understand as long as he wants yeah. to be. Do we even know if he wants to be? Uh, yeah, we don't know. I think uh, I've heard that he sold his house in the area fairly recently. But that's I mean, it's not like he. He bought a house. He's already had a house in Florida, so he's just kind of consolidating, right? But he did sell his house in the air, but that was a while ago, like like last year, towards the end of last, something like that. Uh, but by it's the a, way, it's a good old fake out. He wants to make sure he gets that out of the way now. Yeah. By the way, Strasburg's contract was a seven year, seven after year. 2019. So do the math there. He's he's here for the long haul. 2026. So yeah, I would shut him down then. I, I think that's. I think you have to. But it depends this on guy the was throwing. He his fastball. His fastball. Oh. The last game he pitched was what in the seventies and the eighties. No, not that low, but it was but low. It was like around. It was low. 89, 90. Yeah, this is a fastball from a guy who's known for just a killer fastball. Yeah. You know, nowadays you guys you have uh, these guys thrown in the hundreds um, repeatedly. We'll see how long they can keep that up. Uh, imagine that's a lot of torque on your. Yeah. Uh, shoulder and stuff, but but mark it down uh, today, Nathan. Mark it down. Today is June thirteenth that I am officially declaring the season over for the Washington Nationals. Well, you are the king of the reversal. I try. Jinx. We'll I, we'll have to but see. But if you call it out, before, whether or not if this, you call it this, out when it happens, when I mention it, then it's not a it's not a reverse jinx, and then you jinxed the reverse jinx, I and jin- now it's never going to happen. The jinx of the jinx. Yeah. I don't know if that's how it no. works. I don't know that that here at Ref the District again. Hashtag just a fan. Uh, I'll have to add that onto our lower thirds here on YouTube that we really have a, a say in that. But um, we'll see how it pans out for the Nationals. Let us know what you think. Again, you can hit us up at Ref the District on Twitter, uh, or again we stream live every Sunday on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Eastern. We talk all of the DC sports, largely focus on our NFL team during the game. But as you can see in this episode, we talked big time about the Wizards and the Nationals. So, and But you can join in that conversation too live during these streams. We do interact with our live chat. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to subscribe to us there. Like uh, you know, you know, come out here on YouTube and scri- subscribe to our channel. We have a fan episode planned. If we hit 100 subscribers on YouTube, we're at 58 when we started this morning. Uh, but do leave us a comment on your podcast platform. Stoner, you got anything else to add before I close this out completely? If we get to a thousand, I'll shave my eyebrows. Okay, Matt Rule will shave his eyebrows. If we get to a thousand, I said I would do a jersey giveaway if we get to a mm-hmm. thousand subscribers. So help us get there. We'll have some. We'll have some ref the district swag. I'm continuing to work on that to try to give away some stuff uh, in the interims. So I'm not going to beg for support, but wow. if you like, uh, if you like the channel, support the channel, and uh, we'll give back to you. I'm Nathan. He's the stoner. You have a good one. Mm-hmm.